Hey, good afternoon. My name is Josh Heckholm, Strategic Marketing Manager for Combines in North America, including headers as well. Uh, today we're out in the middle of a uh, nice dryland cornfield in north central Kansas, just north of Clay Center a little ways. And what I'd like to show you here in the next few minutes is the difference between chopping and non-chopping. So with our new 3300 Command Series corn head that's out running on this Gleaner Combine here today, uh, what we elected to do to give a little comparison is to engage the chopping on half the row units. It's an eight row head, so four are chopping, and then we disengage the other side, so we've got four that are non-chopping. Uh, the reason to do this is kind of thinking about this uh, for some agronomic reasons. Why would you want to chop? Why would you want it to maybe not chop? And it's a really good example. As you can probably hear, it's really windy here today. So we're going to take a, take a look at a couple of things. All right, so as we take a look at the job that we've done here, uh, effectively chopping the stock here with the 3300 Command Series, I want to take a look at chop length first. So as, as we take a look at just some stocks that we've pulled off the ground here, not only the length, but the destruction that's happened with that stock so that it can start breaking down immediately, it's really good. It's doing a really nice job. It's a nice length. It's not going to take any time for that to turn into some good organic material that our future crops can lose. So we've got the chopping over here and then we've got non-chopping over here and a couple of things that are obvious are definitely the, the light fluffy material that gets spread out nicely versus being able to actually see some green down the rows. Now what our, our farmer, our cooperator here brought out today was a discussion about why he didn't really want it to chop. And so what we can take a look at here is he's got some green weeds coming in. He wants to be able to get out here and he wants to spray here in the next week when he can actually take care of this and get, these, get this stuff killed. If you take a look at where we were chopping for him today, he noted that it's going to be a little while before he's going to be able to get enough growth on those weeds to actually kill them. Another thing when we start comparing chop versus non-chop, we're obviously getting a really nice chop over here, very, very short uh, pieces of stock. But one thing with this dry material that you notice with our non-chopping side, Leaving that all together is what a nice job it's doing. So similar to the way a, a windrower may crimp the stock, we're actually getting a really nice crimp. You can see several places here at the high speed that he's traveling, probably around six mile an hour, that we're getting a really nice crimp here. So when it starts separating that stock like that, it starts breaking down immediately. And Ron runs a, a mostly no-till operation here in north central Kansas. And it's, you know, not, not the longest growing season in the, in the world, of course. So it's really important for him to start getting that to break down immediately. He's going to come in here next spring and probably plant soybeans in this field. And so this needs to be broke down and he needs to be able to get through that residue really easily with his planter. One other piece that we, we note with, with Ron is it's really windy. Uh, if we get really heavy rain, sometimes the chopped residue will move on us, right? And so we lose a little bit of the cover. The other piece is, is the ability for it to catch snow. So here where building that subsoil moisture is incredibly important for that no-till operation. So that means during that winter time, we got to catch as much of that snow as we possibly can. And a lot of times the snow comes with a really strong north wind. So if we can get some of that material standing up, to catch that snow, as you kind of take a look here across that field, that's what Ron wants to see is some disturbance there to be able to catch that snow. And so if we're catching the snow, we're starting to break the stock down right away, Ron's going to be in great shape when he comes out here to plant soybeans next year.